Hey, Stalker. Tired from a long journey, I assume? Why not sit here and rest by the campfire? Kick back for a bit, have something to eat, and share some stories with the guys. You've undoubtedly seen a lot in your wandering. Gentlemen, due to a story last night, I feel the need to break an order I was given and tell you about the Missouri Goat Man. Now I'm a chemical guy, and we all go to FT.Lost in the Woods to do training. This happened during an FTX out in the woods, next to a ridge and a large stream bed. Every night there is a roaming guard of two privates, and we have our gay little blank adapters, and we just roam around making sure no one is having sex. This happens one night when me and a buddy of mine are posted up on a couple of stumps by one of the light systems they drag out there. About 300, me and my pal are set up under the lamps, soaking in the warm exhaust because it's 250F outside and fuck if we were going to be moving. We are watching the tents, joking how if anyone was going to do the nasty, it'd be difficult due to the cold, etc. Nudge buddy, tell him to catch a nap. He lolls off and is snoozing, snow slowly drifting down through the trees, peaceful just kind of staring into the woods when I hear that crunch of snow extremely faint have to perk up my ears to make it out. I thought to myself, there's no way some idiot is going to freeze his nuts on some girl's ass. Must be a drill sergeant. Nudge my buddy awake. Tell him there's a DS in the woods he perks up. We are both watching the wood line. Sure enough, we see a shadow come in from the wood line, crouching low. Amazing. He can be this quiet in the snow. We both grin. Last time this happened, they dragged someone out and tied them to a tree for shits and giggles. The shadow gets well within the camp line, crouching really, really low. Looking back, it was weird. A tent rustles, and the shadow instantly stands up to full height, fucking at almost 7F tall, and has goddamn horns on its fucking head buddy. And I suck in our breath, and our eyes are wide. This isn't a fucking DS. The whatever it was opens a tent flap real slow, peeks inside. At this time, my buddy has found the little radio we were given in case we need to contact the drill sergeants. Buddy is freaking out and trying to get them out here, which causes them to freak out and come ghosting out of the fucking shadows. They startle us and my buddy yells, we all hear a loud grunt. All are turned to see this goat thing dragging a goddamn private it, has a female private it, has her leg, holy shit, it's dragging her out of the camp. Nothing really happens for what feels like hours, just this surreal fucking stare down. A female DS screams out a war cry and launches, herself at a full sprint at it rest of the DS's pull out their pistols and charge down to try and get the private. He hop up and run down, scrambling to grab the chick and haul her away. The DS's have taken off to chase whatever it was away from the camp, as we are dragging the chick away. The entire camp is up now and setting up a perimeter around the AHA and Chow tent, two areas that have constant light, tense as fuck, Everyone has their bayonets in their hands. DS has come back an hour later, looking worse for wear. Everyone loads up in the Humvees and we get the fuck out of there. Apparently the drill sergeants had chased the damn thing over a creek at which it took off into the underbrush. The female soldier was okay. Whatever it was had smothered her till she passed out. Higher command was weirded out but didn't seem phased and had simply made the DS's carry fully loaded M4s for the next rotations. Oh, big scary goat man? Nah, don't worry about it. Here's bigger guns, yay army. And there are tons of these stories, of people just tearing ass out of the woods in full kit blubbering, and get discharged due to mental instability. I myself only have one other story, and this is from a friend of mine who went to MP training there. Friend is on the last FTX in the dead of winter. He is set up with three other people in a tower overlooking a huge expanse of woods. Scheduled op for attack happens. Everyone's having fun, shooting blanks. Cock, cock, cock. Suddenly a couple of dudes come barreling out of the woods carrying a guy who has a fucking tree branch lodged in his thigh. Everything stops. Everyone leaps into action and drags him onto the fob. He is screaming and crying about the deer man. DSs instantly scramble for their M4s and get on a loudspeaker, demanding every private into their little hutches DSs break a major rule and hand out live ammo to everyone. Everyone tense a fuck that one dude is screaming, the deer man, he's out there, Jesus Christ, protect me, and keep screaming this until the medics arrive.
me and two other bros camping in the woods of the Pacific Northwest about a year ago. It was weekend that was supposed to relieve of us of our stress. A weekend to drink, wheel, shoot, and have fun like no other. Anyway, we decide to go down this old ass logging road and go to a camping spot. Get stuck and get lost multiple times, trying to find my buddy's perfect spot. Get there about the six or seven. We get a fire going and start roasting some hot dogs, cause hey, we're fucking hungry. Just about to open some brews when we hear the sound of vehicles. Lots of vehicles. I look at my friend John and say, hey, you were leading? Did you see any other vehicles out here? Looks at me and he shakes his head. Okay, whatevs anyway. Eating our dogs and drinking our brews, having a merry old time. Getting cold out, so we douse the fire and start to hit the hay. My friend Nate sleeps outside his Tacoma, freezing his ass off in a mummy sleeping bag. Me and John hit the hay in our truck's cabs. Morning rolls around and we get to starting the fire again. Nate looks at both of us and says, Did you guys hear anything last night, like screaming? I'm thinking, what the hell is he talking about? Me and John laugh and we're like, Knock that shit off, man, it ain't funny. Nate is like, Nah, guys, I for sure fucking heard screaming at about 11 last night. Me and John look at each other and look at Nate. I say, Dude, don't fucking joke about that shit, man. It's weird and creepy. Nate just shakes his head and I can, for sure tell he's freaked out. John speaks up and says, Well, boys, if we're gonna be in a screaming wood, might as well be armed, right? Me and Nate laugh and are like, Fuck yeah, get out the arsenal. We get a count. Among us, we had two shotguns, a pistol, an FNFL SKs, and an AR. We're acting all hot shit, because we think we're protected from the screaming. Anyway, we go about our day shooting shit and wheeling with drinking in between fun as hell day. But when we get back to camp, the mood changes. We all drive on it, and shit is raided. We dismount and take stock. Nate's sleeping bag is gone, and our lamps are gone. Food is strewn everywhere, but not taken, mind you. The UTF did they want? What made us really shit bricks was sitting by a tree, a dead, gutted and mutilated deer, and the tree it was sitting by had a pentagram drawn in fucking blood. That feel when your gut churns, and there's that sombre thought that you know you're not welcome out here. We sobered up real fucking quick. Nate's like, we need to get the fuck out of here, man. Me and John are like, fuck, that was staying bro. He's on the verge of fucking crying, and we're like, bro, don't be a pussy. Starts fucking yelling at us that we're crazy and should leave. We look at him and say, dude, if you want to leave, just leave. He does, roars the fuck out of there in his truck. We should have left, but my God, we were cocky. Odd we. Night rolls around and we start a fire again. We sit loaded and ready to go. Whatever the fuck is out here can come damn well get us. I sit facing out towards the forest from the fire. Fael in hands, John does the same with his SKS. We're talking back and forth when all of a sudden we hear the screaming as well. The moment the screaming started, the woods got real damn quiet. Not even a cricket was chirping. It dawned on us that there was no animal. It was a human scream. A girl. Once in a while, the screaming would die down and you would hear chanting cultists for sure and from the pentagram were dealing with Satanists. Now I know you're thinking why the fuck didn't we get out of there like Nate did. Simple answer me and John are fucking retards. Trust me when I say this. It was a learning experience and now, well, we are not as cocky. Anyway, John pats me and on the back and I jump. WTF do you want man? Fucking look bro, he says as he turns ghost white. Through the trees and the foliage, we see light from what looks to be a bonfire. Me and John, the twits, doused our fire and headed in the direction of the other one. We creep through the woods and come an old landing. We see a group of 30 plus gathered around this massive fucking fire. Women, children, old people, and some men dressed in crimson robes. On only what can be described as stone dais laid a girl. Looked to be about 18, skinny and blonde. Screaming the whole while to these people to let her go? She was writhing and crying on the dais. Lo and behold out comes an old man dressed in robes of dark black. Seemed like they'd just absorbed the light itself, but in his hand was a knife. Now I'm shitting fucking bricks at this point, 
Muscles feel like jelly, and I just want to run. Go back to town and forget we saw fucking anything at all, I whispered to John. Let's get the fuck out of here, man. I start tugging on his shoulder to go when he waves me off and points to the old guy. The guy now has the knife fully raised above his head and is yelling his fucking gibberish. John looks at me and says, Back me up, okay? What the actual fuck, bro? John step out of the woods and cracks off a shot over the head of the man in black. Every fuck fucking head whips around to look straight at me and him. They start screaming at us and coming slowly at me. And John... I crack off a shot over the head of some dude in crimson, the mob stops, and the dude in black comes to the front in the most guttural, inhuman fucking voice. These two will do. The man is flanked by the guys in crimson. Now they're all brandishing weapons now and start inching closer. John pops off another shot. The man in black says, No one is here to help you now. I hope you know that. And smiles. I'm going to call him Black Robes from now on. Now I'm saying a Joker-esque smile, ear to fucking ear. John yells something to the effect of stay the fuck away and time seems to sew down at this point. John's SKS barks, round flies through the air and hits black robes in the legs. Dude hits the ground screaming. Crimson faggots hesitate as they see their leader fall. Start advancing again, I put a round through a crimson faggot's shoulder and he hits the dirt. Dude's hood comes down as he hits. Dude is a fatty, John screams. Stay the fuck back. Guys stops. They look visibly shaken as we have a good old Mexican standoff. Redhead and black robes are screaming for help now. The kids Satanists are wailing. A line of women is standing behind the crimson faggot screaming at us. My body is flooded with adrenaline at this point. Let's fucking rock and roll, I'm thinking. Last part after this. I will clear up something right now though. I guess my story is more of a victory over these faggots and not very creepy. So I apologize and I'll finish up. Screaming, crying and mewling of children is all that I hear. Something breaks to the fore of it all. Sirens, fucking sirens out here. John and I are still yelling at these people to stay the fuck back and release the girl. The red host starts inching forward again. John looks at me and I hear him clear as fucking day say, shoot to wound. He takes a step forward and pops a crimson faggot in the chest and takes some girl in the leg I follow alongside him. FNFAL barking as I either shoot for legs or shoulders. Lights everywhere, screaming. Everything goes black as I get tackled by a fucking cop. Look to my right and see John wake up handcuffed next to fucking cop car. Smiles back me and says, We fucking saved her bro. Look into the field and see people getting ferried out of there and into ambulance or cop cars. Blonde is escorted into a cop car. One face is noticed out of them all, however. It's fucking Nate. Cops follow him as he walks up to us. Yeah, these were other two I was telling you about. Cops nod and place us in separate cars. Go back to town. Now this is where the story ends. We essentially got off Scott fucking free thanks to the Blonde's testimonial. Nate's testimonial helped out our case as well. Actually, the whole town practically came to our defence seeing as this was actually a frequent thing up in those hills. Apparently, a lot of people have seen the shit these people do and didn't fess up to it till then. BTW if it helps, I still have that FN fail and my god I'm not getting rid of it. Doing a slash K slash summer in a woods challenge stalker. Gotta chill in the woods with vodka and a harmonica guitar for 48 hours within like 50 feet of a broken down building. Go out into the woods, brought SKS and Glock with me. Spend first half of first day exploring. Find a nice abandoned concrete structure of sorts, set up camp nearby it, make a fire. Got some small game on the way in with moose sling. Start skinning that bitch damn tasty here some rustling, and it sure as hell isn't my jimmies, because this rabbit is damn good. Put hand on rifle, scan the forest in front of me, and behind me, solid five minutes pass. Put guard down and go back to jamming on harmonica. Next day, wake up to screaming eyes shoot open. Grab SKS silence. Absolute fucking silence. 
starts dripping, decide to head in the direction I heard the scream, spend at least an hour searching, got lost as fuck, eventually find my way back to camp, pretty tired it's raining like crazy, see a guy just standing over my fire looking at the smoldering ashes, I get a bit shaken, ish hey man, his head fucking snaps up to look at me, raise my gun, freak out, he doesn't even flinch at all, in fact looks really curious, you lost man? He doesn't respond. He smiles. Do you need some help? His clothes looked a bit tattered, but there were no wounds on him or anything. It was really strange. He looks like he just got run over by a fucking truck without the truck part Mexican standoff.jpg 30 seconds ish later. You're kind of worrying me, bro. Are you okay? He finally speaks. I wouldn't worry about it. Fucking nope.jpg. I could go for another meal right now, though. Another, I didn't leave any food by the fireplace. Suddenly, all of my slash K slash experience starts rushing back. Fucking nope out of there so hard. Don't even try to be subtle. Just turn and run. Can hear him running after me. Turn and start shooting blindly. Continued. Hear a scream. Sounds exactly like the scream I heard before exact same pitch, exact same tone. Everything. Finally reach a road. Tumble down a hill onto it. Run across it and turn around, gun limp at my side. See a figure by some trees up there. Heavy fucking breathing lights of a car coming. It looks at it, and then runs away back into the woods. My fucking face went fuck this goddamn shitty estate god fucking damn it. In a woods with buddy two week backpacking trip in the woods behind my house pack. All the essentials food, gear, guns bring decent firepower because ran into a bear. Last time I have him 14 and M1911. Buddy has Eskaz hike for about 5 kilometers, then take break to eat shit. Etc. Buddy is unpacking food from bags when I go off to take a shit walk a little ways out behind some trees, staring at the ground while shitting. Notice heel print from some sort of boot weird. People don't usually hike out here, tell Buddy about it. We make a few jokes about someone stalking us and forget about it. We pack our shit and move on hike roughly 2.5, three kilometers deeper into the woods. It's starting to get dark, so we decide to make camp for the night setup. Sleeping bags near a fucking giant redwood Buddy starts making dinner while I set up camp. We have a generally good time, eat, drink a few beers, until we go to sleep in retrospect. We should have put out the fire before we went to sleep. But we were buzzed and not quite thinking straight wake up around 2 a.m. and realized that the fire was still going crawl out of sleeping bag and put it out. I sit on my bag for a few minutes letting my eyes adjust to the darkness and I start to see something in the distance. I can see a red glowing light through the trees. It takes me a few seconds to realize it's a flare. The thought of the boot print comes back to me and I wake my friend to show him. He says that it's probably just a lost hiker and that we should pop one of our flares. I take out a flare and light it off. Not a minute later, another flare lights closer to our camp, but in the opposite direction, another and another. Soon there is a total of five flares of varying intensity and direction. Then all at once, white flares light off next to the red ones. Me and my friend are tactically shitting ourselves at this point we start to discuss what to do when we hear a loud whiz crack bark showers us from the redwood behind us and is shortly followed by two more shots I grab 1911 from holster and mag dump in the direction I thought the shots came from. We grab our guns and tactically GTFO out of there fast forward a week. We hike back out to the spot where we left our gear to check if it's still there. Sleeping bags are tossed aside. Buddies' strips cut from his all of our shit from our bags is thrown around all my extra 7.62 ammo is gone. Notice blood on Buddy's sleeping bag. GTFO call cops. Once back at home officer informs us that there have been calls about human hunters in the area. Could have fucking died still hike out there regularly nothing since. 